Okay guys, so let's make our components work so the user can actually create posts. So right back into our components, the first thing I'll do is actually bind this to a data property on our components and I'll call this content. And uh, the next thing I'll do is actually bind the disabled attribute right here to maybe not working. So these are both data properties that we're going to define. And what I'm doing right here is just binding this disable property so that it would depend on a property right here on my component so that I can either disable or enable as I wish. Okay, so vModel content means we have to define a data. And this will return an object where we have the content initialized to an empty string and the not working property would initialize to true because as soon as we load the page the content will be blank and the not working will be true meaning that the bottom will be disabled when the content is empty so that the user cannot go and create post meanwhile there is no content in the post so the next thing we have to do is actually put create a watcher okay so we're going to watch this property of content so i'll go ahead and say watch and what should we watch in this case watch the content and uh, how are we watching the content we'll say if this is a content dot length so the length of that string if it's greater than zero then we'll just go ahead and change the not working property to false so that the button will be enabled so we'll say this dot not working and will be equals to false okay and uh, what if it's not okay so we'll just go ahead and set this back to true okay so what's happening here we're watching the contents property and as soon as we watch it what watchers do is they are just listening for any change in this property so maybe the user types in one word or one sentence or whatever as soon as the user types or changes this, this content property using our V model right here, what will happen is it will trigger this watcher. The watcher will check if the length is greater than zero. If it's greater than zero, then you'll set the not working to false so that our button will be enabled. If not, it's just going to set it to true so that our button will be disabled again. Okay, so I'll go ahead and on go watch so that we'll see if our watcher is watching. So that's done. So let me refresh. Okay, and it looks like the button is disabled. So if I type in something, the button is enabled and it can now do stuff. But if I remove that again, the button gets disabled. Okay, so the next thing actually is to get this data, which is the content that has been typed in, submit a post request to our server, save the post and return a response. Okay, so we are gonna create a new method right here. So we'll see methods and the new method would be create post, okay? And uh, this create post is gonna make an Ajax request. So this that HTTP dot post, and this right here is gonna be a post. And uh, and uh, let's just say that then, as soon as we get the result, we'll go ahead and console that log this response right here. So we'll console that log the response. We'll console that log the response. Okay. So how do we send this post request? So first we have to define where we are sending it to. So we'll just say we are sending it to a route called create post. Okay. And uh, the next thing we have to do is pass in the payload of this post request. So right here we have an object and we'll set content to be this, the content. So the content is this, that content, and that's the body of our post. So we just get the content and then we send to this route. So we need that route to exist. But before we do that, let's go ahead and see how we can call this create post property. When we click this button, we should go ahead and call the create post method right here. So anytime we click that button, it's gonna save, okay? So right here when we create, so right here we need the route. So let's go ahead to our web.php and we'll create a new route. So we'll say route and it's gonna be a post request and it's gonna go to the slash create post. And this is gonna receive an array and it uses the post controller at store method. So it looks like we need to create that controller. So let's go ahead and create it. So php artisan, make controller and this will be post controller okay the controller has been created so we'll go ahead to our post controller and right there we'll have a store method so public function store and this is going to receive the request and right here let's just return the request that we got just to check if this is working okay so we'll just return everything in the request right here so we should be able to see this data once we make the ajax request from our view components Okay, so that seems okay. So let's go ahead and trigger this method in our view and check if it's working. Okay, so we'll go back, refresh. 
it's it's disabled but if we type in some content it's enabled and uh, we should be able to see the results of an ajax request hopefully so create post and that's the response create post status 200 means everything worked correctly and there we have it the content okay so actually we want to empty that as soon as we get the response so we'll just say this dot content equals empty string so let's refresh try again create a post the, ref the response came and there's nothing okay so that's the body and uh, we should also notify the user that he just did something okay so what we can do is actually just use noti and i'll copy the notification from our notification dot view right here so post dot view as soon as we receive the response we're gonna say success this and the message is going to be your post has been published okay so your post has been published nice okay so that's it so we'll notify the user when he creates a new post so let's refresh that and uh, create a new post the post has been published okay we can create another post the post has been published so it's working so the next thing is actually to create this post into our database